Uh, my name is Sandy Jones, and today I'm going to be walking you through a little bit about brainstorming with Jamboard. Uh, I've got a few guests with me as well, TJ Varhees, who is the uh, creator of the Jamboard and also the, the current product manager. Uh, I've also got our demo expert, Noah Green, and a couple of our customers that I'd like to hear from a little bit later on in the, uh, in the session. Uh, so like I said, today we're going to be focusing on how to use Jamboard for a brainstorming tool and a few other things as well, because you're going to find that uh, as you dig into the tool, there's a lot more things you can do with it and maybe things that it does that you weren't really aware of or, or expecting. So I want to talk all about all those topics. Um, to begin with, though, I want to start with a little video. Uh, it's from NC State, and this is part of a case study that we've just completed uh, with NC State. And, and they're going through, you know, education's going through a pretty big transformation just like uh, the, the industry is. And um, their challenge is the de democratization of hardware tools and, and technology in, in particular. Uh, what they're trying to do is provide the same tools to everyone that's going through that education experience. They're also going through a transformation where the library doesn't have the same impact that it used to. They still need to have the books available and they still need the knowledge in there, but the space itself has become you know, just less used. So they're looking at ways that they can turn that into a collaborative space. So that really worked great with the Jamboard. They were able to kind of move the books out. They've got a really cool automated system that will bring the books you need up when you need them and, and you know, still provide access to that. But they've used the space as a collaborative space. Involved the Jamboards in that and made a tool that everybody can approach and use right away and use to, as a collaboration tool in that space. So let's just hear from them really quickly. In the old days, universities would have computer labs, one computer to one person. NC State really helped change the model by creating spaces where technology was really designed for collaboration. Jamboard hits a sweet spot for us on campus. Interactive whiteboards have been a part of education for a long time, but they're less intuitive than the Jamboard is. NC State has over 30,000 students. They're coming from different backgrounds. Students are studying foreign languages using the Jamboards. I've seen students work out equations annotating images, studying anatomy. We put the tools out and the students do things that are unexpected and we've seen that with Jamboard. One of the problems that is solved is, you know, I've done all this whiteboard work and then you see students taking pictures of it on their phone, but now it saves into an app that they can edit later, share with other people. Yeah. The app is mobile and works on lots of different devices. A dissertation is really intimidating and they've never done this before. Being able to access the web with Jamboard, they have more freedom to just kind of brainstorm and think through things. It helps them see the places that they're passionate about. It is life changing. We are a G Suite campus. We use all the Google tools here. So whether that's docs or sheets or slides, there's not a barrier to accessing what you've created on the Jamboard. One of our main missions is to connect different types of disciplines and create spaces for interdisciplinary work. Jamboard fits into this new philosophy of collaboration and democratizing access to technology. Great. Now, and, and I don't want to uh, paint a picture that it's just an education tool because it's a whole lot more than just an uh, education tool. It definitely can be that. But when you look at kind of how enterprises are evolving, and, and I think you could say. You know, technology within enterprise is constantly evolving. But if we pull out kind of two major points in time and look at them, you, you sort of see the need for these types of tools. And the first one was the rise of the desktop computer. And um, there's a very funny John Cleese commercial comparing a compact computer to a dead fish. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube if you like. But, but the idea was that it, it, the computer had been shrunken so small and gained so much power that it made the productivity of an individual user drastically improved and drastically superior to what it was before. It led to things like desktop publishing and, and all sorts of productivity gains for the individual. Move forward to the 2000s, the rise of the internet, cloud computing, the powers of the mobile phone. That kind of converged to an even more impactful revolution in, in our mind, or evolution, uh, that, that was driven by cloud computing and a powerful computer now in your pocket. But it's also left behind certain tools. And it's necessitated the evolution of things like the Jamboard, you'll hear a bit about that today, and, and we sort of feel that a whole new set of tools needs to be built for this new digital age, and you know, G Suite's a great example of that. Um, you know, so if you look at the whole G Suite platform, it's really focused on driving engagement, creating collaboration, uh, 
creating a data-driven environment where you can understand what's happening in your organization from uh, you know, the actual data underlying that. It's definitely created a more collaborative, agile organization. And that's uh, the same thing that Jamboard's looking to do. Take that and just bring that to the, uh, the digital whiteboard space. Create a culture of collaboration within your organization. Allow you to be intelligent about your productivity. Connect your knowledge workers together and connect the knowledge in your organization to the people that need that while rema remaining secure and easy to use. That's really Google's focus here. And that's really the goal of, of the Jamboard as well. I think of the Jamboard as just another editor within that G Suite tool. But it's that editor that can spark an idea or take an idea to the next level and connect people from remote places together. And you know that's kind of what I do at Google. So I didn't say my role before. I, I want to include that now. I am the lead sales for all things meeting room related. So Google Hangout Meet, hardware kits that can go in a conference room, as well as Jamboards. Because we think we have a, a really unique meeting experience at Google. It's very simple for everyone coming in. Every single room has a face on a screen. And now we're incorporating the Jamboards into that as well to allow people to create and ideate from remote locations. Not everybody wants to move to Mountain View and sit in traffic every morning. So we need to be able to handle those remote geographies as well. And so you can see that both of them work very nice together. But today, we really want to focus on the Jamboard as that digital whiteboard that can unleash the creative creativity in your organization. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to uh, TJ Barhees. He's the creator and current product manager of the Jamboard. TJ? Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andy. Uh, so I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, when I first came to Google, it was over six years ago, and um, I was fortunate enough to come and join a company that was um, very collaborative in nature. And not only was it very collaborative, but we had video conference enabled in almost every conference room. And this is something that's pretty unique, um, and is something that we believe in, uh, and we, we um, evangelize, and we're looking f um, to share that with our customers as well. Video first culture helps people, as Sandy said, to not have to be in the same place at the same time. And if you want to learn more about that, we have a session uh, later this afternoon. It's called The Fut Future of the Meetings. Um, it's on level two, room W2016. W2 it's at 315. So after I joined the company, I found myself working on a team. And we had, uh, I had a design team in Sydney, Australia. I had developers in Boulder, uh, Colorado. I had a team in New York and some members in, in California Mountain View. And it was interesting being a product manager because I often had ideas around what we needed to do in order to push product forward. Um, and I found myself always stuck in between scheduling meetings, trying to understand how to communicate. And we had, while we had video conferencing and everybody could see each other and we could talk with each other, uh, there was one limitation. And that was the fact that we couldn't necessarily contribute ideas back and forth visually. We had tools like Google Docs, I'm sure all of you are using it, uh, that has real-time collaboration, which allows you to effectively work on the same content with people live, which is great. But often when you're trying to solve problems and when you're trying to build products, especially when, when you have to deal with something visual in nature, there's a bit of a challenge. And so here's just some stats around why visual communication is important. But what I found in, in my personal experience was the fact that often when I when I would get into meetings and I would have conversations around what we were gonna do, we had to break out of the document. The document was uh, words with pagination. And one way to get out of the document was to then put our content of what we were thinking into slides, which was great. It was a visual tool, but it did require a lot of clicks. It did require us to put things into content. A tool that was really meant for publishing and presentations, we started using for brainstorming, which didn't necessarily lend itself to time savings. So what do people most of the time do? They go to the whiteboard, they pick up the marker, and they start writing. And this is great, because you can unlock ideas, you can unlock your, your, your thoughts. Um, you can start to communicate visually what you're thinking, um, because you're naturally easy you know, to scribble and draw. But there were problems with this. The problems with this were that whiteboard was restricted to the room. It didn't really lend itself to the video collaboration assets that we had where people can contribute back. So you're pretty much stuck trying to figure out how to make that work. Um, the other issue was the risk of it being erased. You're always in a meeting room or you're in a space and then all of a sudden time runs out and you have to leave. 
Um, and so you resort to either copying that out down or taking photos. Um, and then you find yourself in a situation where maybe you've expressed your idea, maybe you've started something that you want to continue on. Well, you have to transfer that back into some form of shape, right, to continue on the digital footprint of that. And that either means you have to recreate it or you have to, you know, draw it out it with other tools. So again, the bottom line of all of this was it, it was just taking too much time. And of course, we have hack solutions, right? We are, in, 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 in replace of this, we start emailing documents, presentations back and forth. Um, you know, we're, we're showing content up to the video camera to try to point to something that we've described. Uh, how many of you have taken photos of whiteboards? All right. How many of you have actually gone back and looked at that photo ever? Oh. Su okay, you surprised me. You got me there. Um, how many of you have wished you could have taken that content and easily transferred it to other document types or other presentations that you could then talk about? Okay, all right. So the other um, challenge uh, that we I found personally, and I know a lot of you can relate to this, is when you're in that situation where you have to use a whiteboard, you start to fidget with a camera and you start pointing your camera to the whiteboard. How many of you have experience where that was not such a great experience? With glare or just the fact that nobody can communicate back. So, um, so with that, I think what, what we ended up uh, doing initially, and, and Bereen, who's my co-founder here, I think he's sitting in the back, he and I got together and we said, hey, we want to solve this problem. And so we built an app to allow you to basically digitally draw uh, and communicate with each other, just like with Google Docs when it comes to typing. And one thing that we do here at Google when we build products is we put it to the test. We call it dog food, uh, where we put it out to the company, they test the product, and we get feedback. And one important piece of feedback that we got continuously was that everybody wanted, they liked the product, but they wanted to see it on a big screen. They like the form factor of the whiteboard. There's something about standing in front of a large canvas being able to unlock your mind and be able to draw and write anything that you want. And so we started to look at uh, digital screens that were in the marketplace. And we started to buy them and we started to run our software in them. And we found out that there was a couple of problems with this, um, th what was existing in the marketplace, which is why we decided to build Jamboard. So my point in saying all of this is, we didn't build Jamboard for the sake of Jamboard. We built it to solve real problems. And I want to share with you some of the problems um, that we try to solve for in building this product. By the way, how many of you have actually tried uh, digital touch screens in some form or shape over the last 10 years? OK, all right. So hopefully when I mention some of these things, they'll come apparent to you. So the first thing we, we saw was the need for precise natural and familiar interaction with a board. Um, and so one of the problems that we saw with the hardware that existed was that there was a accuracy problem. A lot of times when you put your pen down to write, you would find that the ink was printed, you know, maybe a couple of pixels to the side, right? And so you're spending more time thinking about what you're trying to write versus just writing because you're looking at what is being digitally printed on the screen, and there was a bit of an offset. In addition to that, we found that a lot of hardware where when you start writing and you're just, you know, you're trying to, you know, put your words down or draw strokes and things like that, that the actual ink print took some time and that's what we call latency. There was a gap between your intended moment of writing versus what actually showed up on the screen. And what we realized is that a lot of the hardware that was built up until that point in time didn't take into account, you know, all of the technology that was needed to actually make that thing work just like paper. And it's really, really hard to do. I mean, it's hard to do it on, say, 10-inch uh, tablets. It's even harder to do it on a large screen. Not only that, the resolution of the screen was lacking. We saw a lot of screens that were 1080p's, and you can actually see the pixels. But the problem with that is when you are standing in front of a, of a large screen and it's bright in your face, and you want to write like you normally do on a whiteboard, you don't want to see the pixels, and it, it puts strain on your eye. So these were some of the problems that we wanted to solve. The other interaction that we saw was that a lot of people thought that the tools that they were using, you know, every time you want to change a pen to an eraser, you had to go back to the tool set and, you know, 
for a screen this size or larger, that was a lot of work. It was a lot of work just to get your thoughts down. It was much easier to pick up multiple markers and use an analog whiteboard. And one thing in our, in our research and our studies we, we saw was that a lot of people were using their fingers or their palm to basically erase on an analog whiteboard. So that was one of the requirements we put when we started to build this product. We said we want those same interactions that you use in a normal analog board to exist in this board. So we spent a lot of time on that. How many of you have walked into a room and tried to use the marker and it didn't work? All right. So. And then you put it right back. Exactly. How many of you do that with milk in the fridge? <laughs> there you go. So these are common behaviors, right? These are common patterns where we, we wanted to focus our product development on, again, not we, we understand that using digital, you know, tra transforming your work, uh, your work habit into digital form is a lot of work and tough. So we wanted to try to make this as analogous as possible. Again, because our main focus is so that you can focus on your work. You can unlock the thoughts in your mind and express yourself effectively. Because when you do that, you can reach decisions faster, and then you can move your business forward. So that's what we're all about. So when it comes to the markers, there was an issue that we saw with existing screens. They had Bluetooth styluses. They cost like 100 bucks to replace. If they're not charged, they kind of rendered the screen useless. And so one of our requirements was to come up with a passive stylus that you could easily drop or throw or replace. Sorry, Noah, you're going to have to pick that up later. <laughs> um, and so the point here was when you put all these things together, you need a passive stylus. It needs to be accurate. It needs to work on a 4K screen. It needs to have the latency as fast as it can. That's really hard. And that's why we spent a lot of time building this product from the ground up. The other thing that we saw was that a lot of the products that existed had very complex user interfaces. Most of them were built for desktops. And they were desktop applications that then scaled up to you know, a large screen. And so we focused a lot on gestures. We focused a lot on how you would normally expect to use a tablet app on a large screen here. So build it for natural inter interaction. We've seen a lot of young kids who can just walk up to this and start using it. The learning curve is low. Drawing is always on. So you know there are other products that have like home screens where you have to decide, hey, do you want a video conference? Or hey, do you want a whiteboard? Or hey, do you want to share your screen? And often when you're in a meeting and you're trying to get that thought out, all you want to do is pick up a pen and start writing. And that's what you'll see here in the design that we've done here with the interaction. So lastly, we built it for performance. One great thing about the Jamboard is it's built in the cloud. It's built so that we can update this board with features every month. We have a monthly release cycle that goes out. We have a team that's working on this. We are constantly innovating in this space. And what's great about this is you buy this now, and you are getting updates every month. And we are evolving the product based upon feedback that you give to us. So it's designed from the ground up. We wanted to make sure that it looked like something that was inspiring, something that you could walk up to and approach and knew what it was. Again, going back to this idea that it's a digital screen. When you walk into the room, you need to know what it is. The learning curve is high. That's why we designed it the way it is, with, with wheels so that you can move them around. And lastly, for a price that we think is competitive. And not only that, specifically here at Next, we have a special offer. So stay tuned for the end, and Sandy will tell you what that offer is. Last but not least, yes, there's a lot of products in the marketplace. They're all building whiteboards, digital screens. But what makes this unique? What makes this Google? The fact that we can add all of this content and integrate directly with G Suite. This allows you to, uh, to work in this space, start your ideas here, and then move from here into the other products that we have. So giving you that complete round trip of being able to create content easily express yourself, share your ideas, collaborate, and then, of course, move on to the next phase of building out your ideas. The key core features and differentiators here are the fact that you can do this live from a Jamboard to another Jamboard. You can do this live from the Jamboard to the mobile apps. And then also the fact that we've integrated directly with Hangouts Meet. 
So if you're having a video call and you want to present your content from the app to the call or from the board to the call or to anyone else, you can. It's completely integrated so that you can use this no matter what device you're using. You don't have to save, you don't have to put that do not erase on the board anymore, it automatically saves. So this session right now, if I unplug this board and I roll this into the next room and I plug it back in, it will come right back up because it saves in the cloud. And so this is something that is pretty unique. And then lastly, you can share with others, not only uh, with live collaboration, but if you wanted to send this, just like you would have uh, the uh, photo of your whiteboard, you can actually send them a PNG or a PDF of the work artifacts that you've created. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Noah Green, who is our master jammer, and he's gonna show you a little bit of a demo. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see, is this thing on? Can you hear me? You can. Yes, beautiful. Uh, so first, I have to pick up the stylus. That's number one. Um, so thanks for having us, you guys. My name is Noah. Um, I'm a Jamboard trainer based up in Seattle. Uh, it's my purpose here to show you some of the fun functionalities and features of the board. Um, I don't have that long, so what we're going to do um, is show you a jam sort of in the filter and or lens of a very simple use case. How many people in this room have a planned meal with a partner this evening? Raise your hands. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, maybe a little bit less than I was anticipating, but that's totally fine. So what we're gonna do um, with the board here is showcase some of the functions through trying to plan um, some sort of a meal, either this evening or sometime of the week, right? So this is um, the, uh, the Jamboard screen here, and to TJ's point, again, these styluses and or eraser are entirely passive, and they're really designed to harken back to a regular whiteboard where that familiar of interaction is totally core to the use of the board. When we come up here, we're going to click on the drop-down hamburger menu, and you're going to see that I've got a couple of people already added. So that's the remote collaboration function on the board here. When I click on add people, I'm able to add people in and out of the domain that the board has been provisioned to, effectively allowing this Jamboard to connect to people all over the world. So you can be in a taxi headed to work and still be a remote participant within the Jam session. So I've got one of my coworkers who has linked up onto the board, and I'll click this guy, and I'll I'll see, yes, Pritam is in fact in the session. So I'm going to have him jump in here and put a couple of sticky notes up here to sort of uh, figure out where we're going to go this evening. Now, I know that this sticky note here, I've misspelled Moscone, so I'm going to go ahead and double click this guy, get right in there, put an O back in, press enter, and now I'm good to go here where I've just edited a sticky note that I've already put in place. Sarah has a seafood allergy. That's very good to know when we're planning some sort of food. Um, so we'll put that guy right there as well. Now. This guy I have imported from uh, my mobile application. It is a Google document, and it's a schedule for some of the things that I've got going on today. This here is our toolbar, okay? So it's a 16-point multi-touch display, and I can send this toolbar over to either side of the board as well as plus or minus through multiple different um, feature sets here. We're going to focus on a couple of the top ones uh, in this quick demo, but these guys right here, these top ones, are your own handwriting, okay? So if I write something like just schedule, let's put this right up here, and I'm going to write schedule on the board. There you go, misspell schedule, that's totally fine because I'm going to erase it using my finger. Again, familiar interactions are totally core to the experience. I can use my finger just to erase the content like this, undo to get it back, or if I really want a familiar experience, pick up the included eraser and get rid of it just like that. Put this guy right back, only a magnet in there, no Bluetooth connectivity, nothing like that. Now, when I click on this guy again, these last couple of functions and features are what I like to call the ooh-ah features. These things are um, the machine learning functions that are uh, embedded down in the toolbar. So if I go back into here and I click on handwriting recognition and I write schedule again, it's going to take care of it for me and convert it right there, just like this. Now I can use two finger to touch, select to move this guy around. I can copy it if I would like to, and I can even get rid of one of these letters here by striking, 
write it again, and a little caret, and it's going to throw that S right back into place. So I have editing capabilities with the machine learning function on the board here, just like this. Now again, two-finger touch, if I want to get rid of it, I can. I can just throw it down right there. So we're talking about getting some food, OK? So I know that, uh, that food is going to happen sometime right around 7 o'clock. That's fantastic. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this guy up there so I know that it's still present. And I'm going to jump into the internet to find a map. So Cliff House looks fantastic. Let's go there. So I've already done my Google search here. I'm going to press crop. Make it as pretty as you want. Let's go ahead and just get everything in there. I'm going to press enter. And now I've effectively copied this map directly into my jam session. So I know Jono hates kale. I know for a fact the Cliff House serves no kale. So that's fantastic. It's all up to you, bud. Um, Sarah has a seafood allergy, so that's all good, you guys. That's very good. Excellent. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to click on one of these pen tools again. How about this guy? Maybe a different color. How about blue? And I will circle right where we, right we want to go. Now, anybody that has joined this session via a remote participant is able to see exactly where we want to go. And they can, as well, annotate directly on top of any of the images that I have. Now, if I want to really make it clear that we are, in fact, in San Francisco, I can choose another tool here that uses machine learning to figure out what I have drawn rather than written. So this guy right here is AutoDraw. So if I really want to make sure people know that we're in San Francisco, one of the most iconic things to do is perhaps draw a bridge. I am not an artist at all, so let's see what we got. Excellent. Do you mean bridge? I do indeed. So it's converted what I have just drawn into an actual image. Now this is a really fantastic thing for, for dealing with perhaps what I've just done here. But it's also a really cool thing. Um, if you're a business and you need some templatized assets on your uh, ideation sessions, you can simply draw whatever you want and have machine learning take care of that and convert it for you right in front of you. And now, just like any other object here on the board, I can two-finger touch this to move it around to resize and reposition it exactly where I want it to go. So I can also do a couple image searches here to make sure that my team knows where we're going to go. So I'm going to type in Cliff House right here, and this is using a Google image search. Here we go. Perfect. So now I'm just going to simply drag this stuff in here, the ones that I want to have, and I can make these a little bit larger. This is perfect. There we go. We'll put this guy right up there. We've got our schedule there if we want to go back to it. Now, there are so many other functions and features that live in here, you guys. There's some sticky notes that you can see already created up there in the corner. We have the ability to take a, uh, to take a photograph, um, as well as, to TJ's point, um, sharing your screen directly into a Google Hangout. Um, we can jump up here as well, and we can see a number of different frames, of which we can have 20. So in a given jam session, uh, with many different remotely co remote collaborators in the session, you're able to work independently of one another in each frame so that you're not constricted to all being having to work in one frame here itself. You can have 20 of these things open and have pretty much an endless amount of people remotely collaborate through the session. When we look at some of this other stuff, you guys, too, we have some, uh, we've got some emojis, some fun little emojis. We'll throw these guys in there as well. We'll say, yes, Cliff House is, in fact, what we want to go to. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it for my time, you guys, as far as things go. Thank you. TJ? All right, thanks, Noah. OK. so. Uh, You've seen now the demo. You've seen how the interactions work. And hopefully, there are some interesting things here for you to, to look at. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a couple of use cases that we've seen. And what we're going to show you here are actual use cases um, and segments that we've seen from real customers. So one of the most popular use cases that we've seen uh, uh, of teams using Jamboard are design teams, naturally, because they, they have visual workflow. Uh, they're constantly looking at. Uh, new ideas or sketching new ideas, and also when they create mocks, for example, in Photoshop or InDesign, and they get together and they want to like talk about it. So we have a lot of customers who are buying them, who are using them in design teams, design agencies, visual agencies. Uh, this is a pretty popular user segment um, and, and use case. We've also seen a lot of uptake with engineering teams, um, whether it be project management or just you know, trying to understand how to solve problems, doing math. A lot of engineering teams buy Jamboards. They use them uh, constantly to, to work with each other, especially when they're co-located in, in many places. Leadership teams. We've seen a lot of executives want a Jamboard in their boardroom. 
Uh, not only does it kind of showcase innovation and it looks great, um, but actually to map out you know, business ideas, talk about financial uh, strategies and, 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 and workflows. There's a lot of discussion that requires visual mapping, and so this is a tool that they like to use um, that we've seen pretty popular with, with executive and leadership teams. Development teams, teams who are cross-functional, who do agile methodologies, who have stand-ups every day, they're constantly listing out and marking, you know, checking things off the list. Um, again, very helpful for co-located teams. Some teams don't have boards, some of them use the app. But again, this brings everybody into the conversation, allows them to be participant into uh, these types of interactions rather than just giving their status. They're able to actually show their work and, and be part of that conversation. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Sandy, and he has a couple of guests here. Uh, some of our customers are using Jamboard, um, and he would like to ask some questions. So just, uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna invite a couple of people to, to join me up here on stage. Uh, so uh, today we have joining us uh, Sid Batia and Kyle Steinecke from PwC and MailChimp, respectively. Uh, just get a couple of chairs up here. While they're, they're getting up here, I didn't wanna, tell a little bit of my own story uh, about uh, an aha moment. That's really what I wanna get out of these guys. It's kind of that moment where you start to see the, the impact that Jamport can have. And um, you know, when you think of, of brainstorming sessions, uh, some of the barriers that, that can get in the way are, are things like geography or ease of use. You don't want that idea to slip away or being able to put it into a, a mobile device. And I kind of got to see all that uh, in first, first hand. The, the first time I saw a Jamboard kind of rolled up beside my desk, I didn't, really pay a lot of attention. A lot of weird things roll up beside my desk at Google the day before somebody had rolled up a, a blow up uh, unicorn and it, it sat there for, for quite a while. So this Jamboard didn't really phase me until bring your kids to work day happened. And immediately kids were drawn to this. And the aha moment for me was just how easy and accessible the board was. Because they immediately were putting pictures up, uh, taking pictures with the camera on it, pulling pictures off the web. It ended up largely in exploration in different facial hair options for, for their pictures, but uh, it just showed me how easy it was to use and how addressable it was. And then that was something that kind of hung around for a while. I started to see the persistence and, and, uh, and all that stuff as well. So um, that's what I want to get at with these gentlemen here, is sort of talk about their journey. So, uh, you know, Sid, let's, let's start with you. Tell me about the overall, oh, and I should give you a microphone. That makes it a lot easier. Of course. Um, so tell me about the journey that you had using the Jamboard in your organization. And I know uh, there was a, a kind of a key uh, leadership event and that maybe you could tell us about. Yeah, sure. But, um, you know, what comes to mind having listened to you guys, and I, I don't even know if I've shared this with you. So um, we actually put together a, a tech innovation meeting of about 30 people down in, in our office in Tampa. And... Uh, so I work in our workplace transformation team, and we have a lot of people that touch this kind of stuff from an end user experience standpoint, right through to emerging technology and security and so on. And it so turned out that there was some bad weather, and I basically missed the whole first day of the meeting. <laughs> and I was on the phone, and I was on the jam on my tablet and was collaborating them with them for six, seven hours, whatever the delay was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that, to me, was the first indication that that was, pretty, that it was a pretty powerful tool. Right, pretty pretty seamless experience. But this this leadership event, um, about a month after that happened, was 200 of our senior partners and directors coming together around a new service offering. And you know, we've been at Google Shop for a while now. Uh, we 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 think very um, we think digital is pretty important, and so we try to bring it into everything we do. And we were basically trying to figure out how do we get 200 people to collaborate on a Jamboard, and after a little bit of thinking, we, we really simplified it down, got rid of the feature sets, basically said, it's a mobile app, it's a sticky note, we just want feedback throughout a day and a half of plenary because we're not gonna get everybody's input any other way. And um, it, was, it was incredibly successful, not only in terms of gathering that feedback, but for the organizers of that meeting to be able to see that feedback happening real time and then come back to speakers and identify issues, raise questions, and so on. Yeah, and I, I always think of the poor admin assistant that would normally have to take you know, a wall of sticky notes and transcribe them into something that could be used or persisted, and instead, you know, that, that's all gone. So yeah, absolutely. It was, it was incredible. Uh, maybe pass to Kyle. Kyle, tell us a little bit about the journey at MailChimp into leveraging it. I know you had a, a lot of uh, geography challenges that you were looking to overcome. 
Yeah, we, um, we, we were opening an office in Oakland and in Brooklyn um, when we first heard of the Jamboard. And we had been trying to solve the whiteboard problem for, for a bit of time. Um, I was trying to think of, right before this, who actually told me about the Jamboard for the first time. I cannot remember. Um, but we're like, hey, maybe this will work. So we bought one for Oakland. We bought one for Brooklyn. And we bought a few um, for the head office in Atlanta. And um, people started using them immediately before we didn't ha even had a chance to train anyone uh, or tell them what it was. Uh, they walked in the room, started playing around, figured it out, uh, and that uh, kind of went from there. Awesome. And, and maybe you could share a little bit of the benefits that you saw coming out of that. What, what did that impact in your organization? Yeah, w with, the, with the, the teams in the different locations, um, they they wanted to be able to collaborate together. Um, and they, they were really concerned, since this was the first time we had offices in different cities, um, about how they would collaborate. And we had, we had Google Meet in, um, in, in the conference rooms. And they were less concerned about that part, but they were more concerned about the whiteboards because a lot of them, initially, all the teams in those two locations were engineering teams. And they drew on whiteboards all the time. And um, so we needed a way to solve that. And, and Jamboard was the way. Awesome. And uh, Sid, how about you? What benefits did you see coming out of those Jamboard? Well, I think um, in consulting, very much the same, right? Uh, we whiteboard a lot. But I think being able to demonstrate to some of our most senior people that aren't necessarily very tech savvy how quick it is to do something natively digital and it's as mm -hmm. easy as sending a text message, I think was probably the most powerful thing. That story, anybody can pick up, take into any number of their client meetings and go and talk about, about how, we, how we solve digitally. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you could go back in time, and I've learned today that, that quantum computing is just a time machine, so hopefully we'll be able to do this soon. Uh, <laughs> if you go back in time and change something about the whole thing, the way you guys adopted, what would it be? What would be the sort of the lesson learned that you would uh, add? So that, that was one we actually solved when we, when we did our test, right? So the first time we, we had that smaller meeting, um, we figured we're just going to use the, so the Jamboard issues a, an access code, and we figured we'd just get, give everyone the access code. We started to identify some issues with that. Um, and so we're very mindful when you go into this larger meeting of far more senior people, um, the, the experience couldn't possibly be seamless. And so we took some time to invite everyone into the jam uh, proactively before the event. And I think that made it uh, glitch-free, essentially. Yeah, it allows you to basically part. focus on the, the kind of whiteboard the work elements versus without having to get right. to step two or step three of the, the learning curve. Kyle, any, any lessons learned that you could use with the time machine? I, I think the primary lesson that I would do differently if we rolled these out again um, would be planning. Um, we, we expected the engineering teams to use it, and that was the original intent. Um, but we did not expect the rest of the teams in the company, um, tr our training teams, our HR teams, to pick up or want to use it as fast. Um, so we were a little behind on, on, on making them aware that we had Jamboards and how to use them and how to collaborate with them. Um, and, and we, I guess another thing we didn't anticipate was people wanting to do pre-work um, on them. So we, we put a bunch of Jamboards in different conference rooms um, and we had ones that people could book um, and just enroll to a, a temporary meeting or over by their teams. And we found people were booking them uh, ahead of time to draw stuff for meetings later on. Um, so we, we started issuing uh, pixel books uh, so they could use those and, and use the app ahead of time instead of having to roll the Jamboard down the hall to their office and draw on it. Um, so I, I think if we could go back and do that again, we would, uh, we would do that smoother. Right. And, and, and and maybe now that you have gone through that, what's the unexpected things? Because I know there's a lot of things that you kind of intend the Jamboard for, and you can kind of go down that path, but there's a lot of things that kind of crop up and it's like, oh, that would actually be a good Jamboard use. Uh, our education probably was the, the thing that, that, that came up the most. We, we hear a lot from our education teams um, that they love using the Jamboards. They love being able to save, um, save everything on the Jamboard and, and put up um, pre-work. So I, I think work, we would have worked with them um, to, to, uh, to do it better. Okay. Sid, any uh, sort of unexpected opportunities that arose out of the Jamboard for you? Um, I think, so, so part of our plan is uh, initially to put these into both our, what we call our experience centers or our, our digital centers, um, as well as um, in learning facilities. I think, again, just, just so the, the session I described, whilst it was mostly um, the mobile app and uh, responding to what was happening on stage, we actually had two Jamboards in the back 
where people during breaks could go and play around with these things. And so it, it proved the, duo the dual nature of the sort of hardware software play. Um, I think the, the less strategic, more fun one though at the, at the end of the event was it just became a giant selfie machine. So after a <laughs> day and a half of you know, hanging out and, and have, listening to people speak all the time just to, just to kick back, have a drink, have a snack and, and share some photos, I thought that was, that was pretty cool to watch happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you've, they've gone through that learning and kind of learned, have you seen things change around you know, a particular work process or have you seen that sort of the way you work uh, kind of change, I guess, through the use of the camera. Yeah, I think in, in our experience centers, especially our, our digital centers, um, we now, I believe they're part of the design when we build them. We have about 30 globally. We, we keep bu building new ones, and it's almost a requirement now that, that we need to have a Jamboard in there just because of the seamless nature of how it's connected to G Suite. Okay. Kyle, any, any changes in your organization? All of our engineering planning te or uh, engineering teams, when they plan, they now use Jamboards. Um, I think at a minimum, they all use them to put sticky notes up um, and, and work from that. Um, I think they're all doing that. But I get, depending on the team, they're using it more intense. Um, I, I, the last planning cycle, we had people fighting over who could get one um, mm -hmm. and, and switching during the day uh, who had one and who didn't um, because, I mean, they were, they just, they, everyone uses them. They love them. Well, stay tuned for the special offer at the end of the show. I can help with that. Um, so I also, uh, you know, the sticky note thing, that for me that's kind of one of those, those unexpected ones. I know I knew it would be a powerful tool, but um, I never thought of the people that were a little bit nervous to approach the screen. I mean, in a brainstorming environment, if you're not willing to stand up in front of the group, you maybe don't get your voice heard. Or even worse, as you guys were often facing, you're in a whole different city altogether, and you're not in front of that same whiteboard our same uh, sticky board, I mean. And so you're broken telephoning it through a conference bridge. So um, maybe tell me what's next for your organization in terms of using the Jamboard? What's the ways that you're seeing you're gonna sort of propagate it to new areas? I think for, for MailChimp, what's next is we're, we're going to do, um, we're gonna do a, a lot more communication. We're gonna, we're gonna tell people what they can do with it. We're gonna show them use cases. Um, th there's a fair amount of people that are using them and then there's a fair amount of people who are of, you know, they have the opinion, this is a whiteboard. Um, I, can, I can draw on a normal whiteboard. Why is this any different? Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna step up our game of communicating with them or communicating to them what they can do with it, how it can solve problems for them, um, and, and how can, it can fix some of the broken workflows that they have. Great, yeah. Sid, how about, how about you? What's next for PwC? Yeah, I think, um, so I, I talked a lot about um, our examples internally, so learning and development, HR and such. Um, I think, these are gonna become a staple at every meeting, large or small, um, over time. Uh, I think we've, we've sort of planted that seed now. Um, but, but how we work with our clients, right? So uh, part, part of the work I do is around the future of work and everything from flex work styles to be able to work anytime, anywhere, any device, that kind of thing. This, this just adds to that arsenal of, you know, when I go into a conversation, if I can be doing that presentation or, or doing that session with a client and with, with their colleagues and people from my team and have them all spread out. That's just, that's just doing, like um, I think TJ said it, dog food, right? It, I'm not just talking about it, that's, ex that's actually what we're doing. Gentlemen, thank you very much, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I just wanted a couple sort of housekeeping points to, to wind up. First was the wonderful offer, uh, $1,600 off a of Jamboard if you buy it during next. Uh, so uh, if you want to hear more about that, definitely stop by the BenQ booth. They can give you all the details on that, but uh, a great opportunity to get the, the board at a discount. And then I did want to go over kind of key takeaways here. Uh, so, you know, if you've heard things that interest you and you want to learn a little bit more, definitely stop by the G Suite showcase on level one for, for a uh, more in-depth demo. Some people from Noah's team will be there to help you with that. Download the free Jamboard app. So if you're using G Suite today, you have access to Jamboard and you start using the app. Also visit the BenQ booth. That's where you can find out more about the special offer. And lastly, attend the future of meetings session on level two at 315 today. That's W2016. That'll just show you a little bit more about our whole meeting room uh, approach here at Google. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we'll be around for a hand or any questions after the session. We really appreciate it.